Um, well, after we've had our breakfast and whatever in the morning, we'll usually get to the start about an hour, hour and a half before. And um, yeah, just kind of get ready really, you know, have last little bit of food and maybe have a little look through the, through the race book. And then usually half an hour before we'll have a bit of a team meeting and, you know, go through go through tactics for the day and, you know, see who's feeling strong and just kind of what we're going to do in the race. And um, yeah, just like last little preparations and kind of get going from there. Um, it kind of depends on the director, really. Sometimes, you know, they like to do it in the morning. Some, some directors like to do it in the evening, but uh, I'd say the majority of them just do it on the bus before the start, you know, so, you know, some guys, let's say some young guys maybe at some, some big big races for the first time might look, get a little bit nervous if they're doing these team meetings before bed and, you know, might not sleep properly or whatever, so generally we just do have a quick chat in the morning. Yeah, yeah, I guess sometimes, you know, um, depending on what race you're at or, or what job you've got, you know, you might be a little bit, bit more nervous and like generally, like kind of my stage in my career now, I don't really feel nerves that often, but you know, every now and then, like like this year, for example, in Tour of Flanders, it was my first one and the job was to try and get in a break and I was pretty pretty nervous at the start. So uh, yeah, maybe I was a little bit, a little bit quieter than usual on the bus in the morning. Yeah, definitely. Uh, especially we have quite a lot of young guys on the team and um, you know, people are actually quite new to cycling and as a whole. So, you know, I've kind of come from, come through all different levels of teams and I kind of know, know where they're at and stuff. And so, you know, sometimes maybe I'll try and simplify things for them. And also like with the language barrier, you know, like I've, I've been on Chinese team before and kind of gone through the whole language barrier. And sometimes you get a bit confused and maybe sometimes, you know, other people don't pick it up. And I kind of pick up sometimes that they, you know, I just get the inkling they don't really know what's going on. So sometimes I'll have a bit of a chat with them in the race and just check they're all right and you know, know what the plan is and stuff. But um, I think the first days you, everyone has to be quite attentive. You know, sometimes you can lose a race on the first day, and you know if you miss the break and a few teams, you know, start playing poker a little bit, gaps can get too big, and you know we've seen quite a lot of races slip away on the first day. So. We always have to be attentive and not necessarily be in the break, but you know, make sure the right combination's gone and you know it's it's not too strong and it's the right number of guys and stuff. So uh, definitely, stage one is is quite important, especially like in the first few k's. Yeah, I think you can. Uh, it kind of depends on the race and where we are and stuff. But I think here, you know, you can never really switch off the races. The roads are quite small. And um, of course, the weather is generally pretty crap, and this, you know, it's going to be windy and a bit of rain and stuff. So it kind of makes the peloton a little bit, a little bit more nervous than usual. So you can't really switch off, but in general, it does kind of settle down, and everyone chills out for a bit. And you know, hopefully, you know, some of the stronger teams will take control and look at bringing it all back for, for the finish. Yeah, again, it always depends on the stage, um, how it's been and, you know, what the finish was like. And of course, like how the teams performed as well, you know, if they've had a bad performance and, you know, maybe there might be a few, a few pissed off guys, might be a little bit quiet or whatever. But, you know, in general, everyone's maybe they'll have five minutes and then everything will be cool again. And but general procedure, you know, we might do a bit of a cool down on the trainer as soon as we finish and you know, the the bus driver and Swan Yale have the recovery drinks ready and a bit of food for us for the for the journey home. We'll take a shower and just kind of start thinking about the next day already. Um, I think, you know, the kind of immediate aftercare, immediate care in, in the hospital, you know, I was super lucky just to get looked after the way I was by, by the hospital I was in and the doctors around me. And, but, you know, as soon as as soon as it crashed, you know, I had, there was a doctor from, you know, our team on site and he was immediately in contact with the hospital and, you know, the doctors back in Africa were, were in contact straight away with the team, with the hospital, sorry, and the doctors and just making sure I was getting the right care. And then afterwards, just kind of, you know, the big thing, like general aftercare, just 
you know, you might have some small questions or some small problems that you're worried about and, you know, I've just, we have three, four team doctors and specialists who are just a phone call away and, you know, they can put your mind at ease and just give you a bit of advice and just make sure you're doing everything right and, you know, they can also, if there is something that needs doing, they can point us in the right direction and, you know, make sure we're getting the treatment and and care that we need just to get back on our bikes as, as soon as possible and, you know, get back to where we were before we crashed. Yeah, like, you know, on the team we have, I think we have five doctors um, working for the team and their sole job is to to keep us healthy and in good shape and, yeah, like I said, as soon as as soon as they hit the ground, I guess, and, you know, the news gets to the doctors and uh, they're already immediately thinking about you know, getting the best possible care for me and getting me, you know, recovered as, as uh, not really as soon as possible, but as, as good as possible and, you know, trying to put me back to the condition I was in before, uh, before I even hit the ground. Right? Mm. Um, well, that's another thing, you know, like the team, they, they kind of were in touch with the, with the hospital and, you know, my insurance and everything and it was all... Um, it was all ran pretty smoothly and, you know, they didn't let me leave too early, but on the same same hand, you know, they wanted to get me out of there and, and back home and, you know, back to the UK as soon as possible. And, um, yeah, they looked after me pretty well and it was all, uh, all ran pretty good. Yeah, definitely. I think, you know, looking before the stage and now kind of how the race is unfolding midway through now, I think there's about 60 k's to go. Uh, we have a super strong team here for the finish. We've got like we've got one GC guy with us in a six rider team. So essentially, we've got we've got five riders who are really strong in the last few k's. And um, I know there's a few guys who haven't raced for a while and are going to be motivated, you know, to finish the season strong. And um, I think in particular, Edvald, he's in really good shape. Uh, and I think today's race, you know, it's quite it's quite tough, which you know might tire some of the pure sprinters out. And um, you know, just with with the smaller teams, it kind of makes such a big difference to have that stronger team. And you know, he's going to have kind of more matches left to burn in the last few k's. So I'm pretty confident we can we can get a good result and if not win today. Yeah, bicycles change lives. That's kind of the main motto of of our you know team partner which is uh, Quebec charity they um, they provide these bikes and they give them out to kind of people in Africa who, who need them you know just to, just to kind of broaden their horizons really and you know give people transport to get to school to get uh, better educations and you know get to work and just kind of change people's lives really and it's the main main ethos and mission of the team is to try and uh, try and get 5,000 bikes basically through kind of the exposure from this team. I think so far they're on uh, 4,100 bikes. So uh, yeah, we're getting pretty close. <laughs>